Stan and Smoose also in his final season as they uh, say goodbye. That the shift, the crossover. Terrence drops it off with a hammer. Nice three by Moose Three. Moose Three with a drive, puts it up and in. Oh. type of music make them want to replay nah I never delay nah I never delay um, hello everyone so today we have a, a, a guest uh, Terence Mustre from uh, the Philippines he's played here in London had a great career here in London for Harris Academy went over to the Philippines played for top collegiate programs in the UAAP such as Adams and Falcons and Devasal Green Archers. Um, you also had a stint in the MPBL. Yep. Um, he's back here in London and he's here to share his stories. T, welcome to the show today. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Coach Clive. Thank you. It's great to have you on today. So um, if you'd like to just kind of give an introduction to yourself, um, to the viewers that, that may not have heard of you or have seen, or have seen you, but like a, a, a nice introduction from the man himself. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Terence Moustre. I uh, played for Steve, Mark, uh, Steve Bucknell, under 18s, Lewisham and Harris Academy. And I played in UAP in Philippines for two, five years. And then from De La Salle University for two years and then Adamson for three years. And then I played semi-pro MPBL for Kalaokan Supremos. Great, um, so let's start from the beginning. So um, you were born 1993, yeah? yeah. This, this was the, the year that your father was actually drafted to the PBA from Le Tran, correct? No, um, no, he was drafted from like a PBL team. I think a uh, burger machine. Oh, burger yeah, machine. Like, yeah, because the story was like uh, all the positions that he was like, basically my dad was a shooting guard and then uh, all of the shooting guard positions in San Miguel was injured back then. And then there's this coach like uh, coach um, Ron Jacobs. He really liked my, my dad. So he signed my dad for like a, little contract for like a year contract and then my dad just blew after that so because ever was injured and then that was his chance basically to to rise up mm. yeah so the pbl at that time it was um it was similar to what the mpbl is now yeah. it? it was a, yeah. a semi-professional yeah. league yeah. it was like a platform for say athletes to to play build up so they can get to the pba correct to the pba yes yeah like a step forward to the pba basically yeah. so um so you were born actually when your father was drafted correct yeah. um so you you spent a lot of your your growing up years in the philippines um do you remember how it's like being the son of a, a PBA player being in there. Were you in the arenas during the games? And I was, since I was like, since I was small, like baby, my mom was, oh, my mom and my dad always takes me to the games. You know, it's like, there's no games that I didn't miss really. That's the life of being a son of a basketball player when they were kids here. So. And how was, how was the atmosphere then um, compared to, to how it is now? The atmosphere was so crazy because like everyone was like when I was a when I was like growing up from like a baby to 12 years old I was like it's crazy how people always love like Hinebra San Miguel kind of like fans and stuff like that it's crazy all the time so it's like the atmosphere from now till then it's like so different but now it's like more on a college college kind of way of mm. um, like crowd they most like they love watching college games instead of the pba because it's more exciting you know it's there's like upcoming rising stars from the college to go to the pba that's why it's more exciting to watch college ball now instead of PBA. Mm. then yeah because i i remember my, for example my cousins in the philippines would tell me about you know the, the pba games and 
mm-hmm. people would would fight to get in, you know, to the arena, <laughs> and and people would people would wouldn't even sit in seats; they would sit in the stairs and, and the and, chairs, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. and, and the, in, the, in the in the you know wherever they can find it, just to mm-hmm. be part of, like, say, the PBA finals. Um, so, say you're you're you know you're watching your father play. Do you remember those days? I mean, you were quite young then. I was so quite young, and then there was this like video that just came up on YouTube that when my dad hit a free on a clutch free like a seconds, and then Baldabid came down in a half court line and take a shot and made it, and then that was I think I was small back then. I was like five six years old, and then that was the best memories because. My dad, my, because every time they win the championship, I always go to the ball boy because like there's a ball boy that always carries me to the to to get to my dad. Mm-hmm. And then that one time I was already uh, sitting by the rails where the ball boy is, and then everyone was celebrating my after my dad took that shot. And then second later, there's a like a buzzer beater from Balderbid from half court half court line. Then I I came running towards my dad and then. My dad was like, no, no, we lost, we lost. So I cried after that. And then that's when I went back to my mom to the stand. So, yeah. What year was that? Do, do you remember the year? I think that was 1990. Yeah, 1998. That's it. So you were five years old. Wow. Yeah, five memory. years old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, that was 1998. Yeah. And, that, and that was the closest your father had a chance to win the, the championship. Yeah, right? yeah. That was after that then they're trying to rebuild and stuff like that then they started winning championships and then every time like they're in the dugout i'm in there celebrating and stuff like that i have like every player from where my dad from the year that my dad came and then my dad ended or every player that came in and out for san miguel i knew of everyone so i became close and stuff like that um so yeah, and then every before games they shoot around. Uh, I always shoot around with my dad, and then play with some of the players and stuff like that in the arena. So yeah, well, when you're part of that, say part of that whole community, I mean, um, a lot of the the players that were teammates of your dad, their their children are actually say your age, right? And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, some yeah. of some of their players are like. Some of those players that were teammates were also your Ninoms, which is yes, far, my right? Ninos, yes, yes. So, um, do you still keep in contact with, with like, say, the community there? The, the, they probably a lot of them are, are, are excelling, probably playing in Gilas, probably yes, uh, yes. professionals now, not just in basketball, but in their careers. Do you still keep Very in touch good. with them? Oh, yeah, of course. Like, some of the kids of the my dad's teammate in San Miguel, we always keep in touch. We always say hi, hello, how's everything and stuff like that. And there's like, every time like my dad, my dad uh, keeps in contact with their San Miguel, play, San Miguel teammates. They always ask about their kids and stuff like that. So it's like, it's, it's touching, you know, it's, and um, yeah, it's like every time that we get a chance to chat around and stuff like that together, we have, we create a group chat, you know, it's, it's like, it's it's good to be keeping touch with like the kids and stuff like that with the community of uh, San Miguel, and most of them like are succeed basketball players already. Um, most of them are in PBA, and most of them are like still in college playing for the last year. So yeah. Shout out Mike the Kite Mustre, yeah, <laughs> uh, PBA yeah. legends. Um, <laughs> so. Of course, we we understand. Normally, I ask the guests, you know, where is the, where did you fall in love with the game, and and where did the passion grow? Um, I can see where the inspiration is from the beginning. You know, uh, being in that environment, watching, you know, watching say your idol play at the biggest stage in the Philippines. Um, so, when did you actually say, okay, this is, this is my opportunity to now start playing and and is it, did you attend some camps there? You know, what what decided, made you think, okay, you know what, I'm going to start pursuing this? It started when my dad always bring me to his practices, always bring me to his, um, like, to, when shooting around before games, 
that's when I started falling in love because I've been watching all these big guys just, you know, like playing so hard and sweating so hard. It's like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. It's like, I want to be just like my dad, working hard to provide for us, you know what I mean? It's like, that's the key of it. And then, yeah, that's when I started falling in love when I started touching the ball, dribbling it, and then shooting with with this with this big people around me. And yeah, that's when I started falling in love with it. And then since then, just keep working hard every day. Just my dad just keep always teaching me and stuff like that. So, yeah. The, the, I, I remember, I, I may be mistaken, but I think you, was there like an Alaska basketball camp that you attended before when you were younger? Uh, no, no, it was um, Milo, Milo Best, Milo Best Center. And, like, and they, they still run that now, isn't it? Yeah, Milo. they still run that, yes, yeah, 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 they still run that. It's like, it's just from, if you want to learn from being a basketball player to, to growth and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, that's, I think, in Philippines, if they like little kids, like babies and stuff like that, they can mm. still start from there and stuff. I started from there basically. My dad enrolled me, so and stuff like that. Yeah. So when when did you start playing competitively? So what kind of age did you actually start playing in like games and and your father actually started to come watch you and, and your family came to support you? Um, it was when I transferred from like a little school, like San Benildo near our house, I started playing competition when I transferred to San Beda for grade six, like grades from grade six till first year of high school. Uh, that's when I started playing competitive. Then that's when my dad started watching and stuff like that, my whole family. Yeah, it's just cause it's like, cause, um, it's Babylonia's little, little um, be, um, son was an, in San Beda already playing basketball. And then they recruited me to come over and stuff like that to play f- two more years for San Beda in SBPs, like a little league and stuff like that. So I came with him and then, yeah, that's when it started uh, playing competitive because my old school was not really like a competitive school. They were just like Catholic, super Catholic school. So yeah, there's not really basketball athlete and stuff like that. And what age would you say you were? I think, I don't know, I thought, uh, I think 13, 13, 12, 13, 12, 13, yeah. 12, 13, because I came here when I was, Around 15, right? I remember. 15, yeah, 14. 14. I was here 14. And then, yeah, 12 years old, yeah. 12 so you spent, old. spent two years there, pretty much, right? Around two, three yeah, years, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like, is it called, up? I believe, junior high school, isn't it? Or, or, yeah, junior high school is like, yeah. Grade school and then yeah. junior high school. So how, yeah. how, was, how was the competition? I mean, um, is, it, is the quality level of that say standard in the basketball in, in the Philippines of basketball is it is it quite good um, do you actually get recognition do do people look out and, and scouts actually look out for you know to to recruit you for college programs yeah but back then it was because it was some better they have a really good program they always like look after the the kid from having a potential to get to the college level so they basically keep him until they get yeah better until for the until they're ready for college so yeah i think like the program for some better it was just it was just like they want you to grow to be a good player until you get to the until you get to college so yeah it's it's more it's more like having to have more confidence and experience to get to to the level that you want to be so once you finish Sam Better, um, or you didn't actually get to finish it half when yeah, you were fourteen, you you moved to London. That much it must have been a a, a big uh, transition period for you in your life because uh, you know you grew up in Philippines your whole life. Now you're in London, which you know is is a very diverse city, uh, completely different to to how Philippines is. You know, a big city with uh, with lots of you know 
opportunities. You know, you go to school, there's different people from different backgrounds. How was that transition into London? Were you, did you get homesick and, you know, uh, uh, how, how was it just, for you? It was really hard because, like, I regret, like, to be honest, I regretted it to come here back then because I told my dad that after my first year of uh, high school, my second year of high school, the coach from the juniors, junior team of NCAA wanted, wanted me to play for the juniors already after, after a year of high school. And then it's just upset because my dad really wanted us to go here to be with my mom because my mom was alone here. And then I got no, I got, I didn't really have no choice to be able to come here, to, to come here. But since the transition of, from being, the, from being, from having the competitiveness to bring it to the UK is, I wanted to bring it here. So it's yeah. like, I wanted to be the best as I can here from what I learned from two years of competitive leagues to the UK, mm. so. So, you know, speaking on, say, advice to the generations, you know, a lot of the, say, the young UK Filipinos, they really want to make it. For example, say they want to play higher in the PBA or they want to make it uh, and play in college. Do you think being in the system, as they call it, I hate to call it sometimes a system, but being in the system in the Philippines, you know, when you're, when you're young, say in a program like San Beda, uh, and they can look out for you uh, in a way that they can nurture you, you know, you train and, and, and team C. Do you think that's a better plan in a way, rather than going there when you're 18, 19, and yes, yeah. it's, a, it's a difficult transition? What do you think about that? I think you're right, coach. You're, like, you're definitely right because it's really hard for us to adapt the basketball, Philippine basketball, in when we're outside of Philippines, Philippines basically. Because from my from uh, experience, from having this comp super competitive uh, time, to no, I'm not being um, from UK, but it's like. It's because we practice every day there. And then you come in here like two, three times a week. And then what you coming back there again, it's really hard for like to transition. But if you like, if you start from being young and to grow to from like above 18 years old, it's, it'll be easier for you to, to, know the, to know the community, the system of the school. It's like, because when you're 18 or above, you won't know what the school system will be if you come in here, if you come in there. So, so yeah, my trip, like that transition will be so much different. No, yeah. I, I, I agree because I can, I can see, it, especially with some of the athletes that go out there from here, um, it's, it's unfortunate they struggle because. Um, it's not necessarily that they're not talented and they're not good enough. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just it's adjusting good. to the lifestyle. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the players already out there are, are, in, the, are in the system. Uh, the yeah. coaches know them. They've seen them for a long time. You know, it's, you really have to be exceptional in a way for you yeah. to, to exceed. It's like for me, like I, when I came back to the Philippines, I was... I was um I was just an average player. Like I'm not really that good like like Key Forever and uh, Geron saying. I'm not those kind of guys when I came back. But I felt that when I was here because I put the competitiveness from from Sun Better to put it here. So I felt like I was more confident for myself and stuff like that. But but when I came back, it was really hard for me because I didn't know the system. Yeah. Because I was there, for, I was here for like more than seven years. Mm. And then came mm. back, you know, came back to the Philippines, age of 20, 20, oh, age of 21. So it was really hard for me to trans, trans, like, to transition. Yeah. Yeah, transition. Yeah, that's it. Um, we'll definitely get to and touch on that part when uh, you, you know, when you actually eventually go back to the Philippines. Um, yeah. 
So you're in London, or you're in you you you're not based in London, right? You're actually outside London, Epsom, is it? Yeah, I'm no, I'm in Preston now. Preston, uh, Preston. Yeah. But Preston when you Manchester. when when you first came to London uh, to be reunited, London. are you in London? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was in um, London. Yeah. Um. So, oh yeah, because you were playing for Harris Academy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um. <laughs> so. You know, you're, you're, I remember when you first came, uh, you sparked so much uh, life, I would say, and some energy into the community because we'd never seen someone, a talent such as you, and especially at what, uh, you were only 14 at the time, 15. Um, where, where do you go from there? So, you know, finding a basketball program, finding a coach, finding a basketball club, which kind of suits your mentality kind of you feel you know this this club will get the best out of me well it's all started in youth games it's it was we were representing sutton sutton county and then i was with sam estrada one of your players shout out sam shout out sam (laughs) (laughs) and um yeah there's there's this one coach that would like was just watching us and then he he's called uh, Robert Youngblood he coaches uh, Essex Leopards one time for division 1 so yeah he he talked to me after after the game and then he was like oh we're having this uh, academy that we're building with Steve Bucknell i was like oh, who is Steve Bucknell i don't know who that is and then i came I came there and then started, like, started showing what I've got. And then that's when I started building his trust because, uh, like, I was, show, I was just showing how competitive I was, how he wanted us to be. So, so yeah, that's... As they say, so, they, yeah. were, they were always, in my eyes, it, you know, talent will always be spotted. So... Um, yeah. Again, the the path will follow to say now uh, you're joining Young Bloods program. Um, yeah. Was this at, this was at Harris Academy? Or? Yeah, this was at Harris Academy. Yeah, he, he, it was. That's where it all started, and then that's when I met uh, Dwayne, Dwayne, Camille, and Ruel Graham, one of my best teammates in Harris. So yeah, that's when it all started. Right. Was this the time that you met? Um, so I worked professionally with uh, Jade Buckley as well. Was he on that team too? Yeah, yeah, Jade. Yeah, yeah. He was in a uh, Lewisham team. Yeah, he was in Lewisham team. Yeah. yeah. So he, he told me. He, he told me you took his minutes. That's what he said. To me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just gave it there just to you know just to show what I've got. No. <laughs> uh, Jade, he, oh he, he's got love, man. Uh, shout out Jade. Yeah. Um, he's a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so playing at for Steve Steve Bucknell. So for 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 the ones that do not know Steve Bucknell, you know, great coach in the UK, strong reputation. Played in the collegiate levels in America. Played at North Carolina, I believe. Um, yes. Played in um, the NBA as well. So he's running his own club here, which is now at the London Thunder. Um, how's it like to play for a coach like Steve Bucknell? He's he's a really like he's one of a coach that really wants like the best out of you. He he wants he wants you to he wants to trust you on what you can do. It's like he lets you do what you want, but you have to show him that he should trust you. It's, he's just one of those great coach that believes in each players. So so yeah, that's. Playing for Coach Steve Bucknell is like a, so much privilege because I didn't know that he was just one of those great, great coaches back in when I was playing with for him. So yeah, it's just really a privilege to play with Coach Steve Bucknell. So um, you played at under sixteen and under eighteen, correct? Um, just under eighteen. Just under eighteen. And under um, your team won the national title with the under eighteen, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So this, I mean, 
I mean, the system back then was completely different. I mean, they, we didn't have the, I, I don't believe we had the EABL, correct? And, and all yeah, this other, yeah, yeah. like there were academies, but, um, you know, a lot of them were integrated more into National League to, to, for mm-hmm. development, which is, you know, it happens now too. Uh, but the EABL provided a platform for a lot of the, just the colleges out there. Um, describe that feeling of, you know, being part of the team, you mentioned some names, you know, uh, you, you and Roel used to be quite a, a strong dynamic duo in, 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 yeah. in the UK scene. I remember you guys uh, were making a lot of noise. Uh, describe that under 18 team, because I still see, uh, you know, you, you share it. It, it. it has a lot of like kind of meaning and memories to you, right? Because like that under 18 team is like so much memories and so much things that we don't want to forget because it's like we have ups and downs and stuff like that so like every time every time one like one of us like goes down everyone has to pick him up to be in the same page it's like i don't know it's like i felt like i have brothers like really have brothers like how coach steve put us together as a team like as a one team that's how it made me feel like I don't want to lose this memory. Like I will never be who I am when I was there without them. That's how it was. Well, that's, that's how it felt like just pure family. So it's like, yeah, that's just like, if everyone's competitive, everyone has to be competitive. So yeah, that's about it. And then, yeah, it's just, your family really so do you think that you know that that brotherhood as they call it you know do you think that transcends onto the court so as a close as you are off the court do you think that 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 transcend transcends into the court like as in yeah, the way you like play every, yeah it's like everyone has everyone's back it's just we transition from outside to the inside of the court it's like whatever it can be whatever my teammate helps me to do i will help him what i can do so it's like yeah uh, everyone has each other's back really that's yeah, how that, it, was. That, like, it, it helps build that trust factor as well trust, right? yeah, Especially. Yeah. um so looking at the under 18 you know that that whole run were you guys undefeated is there any games that really speaks out to you that you thought you know this is a game that i'll always remember um as part of that championship run well, we was we was I think we I think we was undefeated. Yeah, we didn't we lo- we didn't lose until nah actually we didn't lose. Yeah, we didn't lose. So all throughout we was just fighting for the championship, championship national championship, and then like we were all scared we like to be honest we were all scared to face manchester because manchester was the big thing because like jack cook was there and stuff like that tom i forgot his surname yeah they were just like making loud noise for manchester and then luckily we were faced we faced london pioneers in the semi-finals and then omari omari coates uh shot a clutch free and then, yeah, that's when it all started. And we faced Westminster uh, in the finals. That was a strong team. Um, so, yeah, it's like we really worked hard to be in that position, to be to be winning those uh, chips. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know, for example, you the crowds in, in Philippines, especially for the UK people that have never seen college uh, athletics in the Philippines it's very similar to it's very similar to how America run it you know the thousands of fans screaming yeah, yeah. the environment's crazy but you know being in the final four at under 18s it's would you say it, 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 the environment for UK is actually pretty good because I like to think that you know there is a bit of a crowd it does you know there is a bit of excitement it's not the thousands of people but it does get a lot of attention right Yes, yeah, like fans, like I think uh, basketball here in U- uh, UK when it all started was when we were in high school playing for Irish. I think that's when it all started that community of basketball was building up and stuff like that. 
um, yeah, I think from now, like until now, like I think college basketball is like getting bigger and bigger. I think the louder of like, it's not even like, it's not a thousand people, but the love of what the fans or like what the people watch is like, they see how, like they see people having fun and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it's just the love of the game that I think they look at like, that's the loudest, I think, of if it's not even a noise, it's just how they want to learn the, and they want the pa- to see. the passion, right? The passion, the passion yeah, that's yeah. it, yeah. So yeah. No, I agree. I agree. It's a like you said, it's all about it's not just about the quantity in the, the mm. numbers, it's all about the quality, isn't it? And yeah. um as you can see the, the especially at final fours, you know, I coach some national league players and and they always remember their final fours. They always said, I played at final fours. You know, it's something to be proud of. And the parents usually come down, they support. There's yeah. always a good crowd. Um, so I think you played one more season with Harris after that, right? I think you did under-19s. Yeah. Under um, and, you played, yeah. and you played college. Um, and you guys won as well that year as well, yes. correct? Yeah, 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 that year. Yeah, yeah. It's just that, that year was a different team. It's like um, the year before, we didn't really re- win it. But under 18s, Lewisham, the club team, we won it. But then the next year, under 19s, Coach Steve Bucknell brings like this England players coming in from, from grade school. They came in to play for Harris Academy. So, yeah, he recruited them to come play for us. And then that's when we start all winning and stuff like that. So, yeah, under 19s, that team was, I think, the great team that I've played with. One of the great teams I've played with, under 19s, Premier League for Harris, because we got like Cavill, 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 Bigby Williams, that's in D League, NBA D League right now. Myers Lawrence Smart was like, a, like a agile, super quick point guard. And yeah, like, and stuff. Um, Dwayne Dwayne Origo was in here as well for like one of the England players. So yeah, it was like good good journey for us under 19s. That was like the best year as well. So when when I, when I mentioned you won the championship, which, which one was that? Was that the the college league? Was that the national league? That was the because under 18s Lewisham we won that, and then the under 18s Harris we didn't win it because we lost to Manchester in semi-finals. But then the next year, under 19s, Premier League, we won it. We won it with, like, the England boys. So, yeah, it was a good program for us. And then Bark and Abbey have a good program, kind of like players from different kind of countries they, they played for. So, yeah, under 18s and under 19s, Harris, and then under 18s, Lewisham. That was uh, two championships well, that I played for under Steve Bucknell. Well, they say in basketball you always have to lose one to win one. So win maybe one, that, yes. so that that loss at Manchester, you know, you got yes, your yeah. you, you got your redemption in the way. Redemption, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so now uh, under, so you finished your season, you know, great season with some talent, which actually, you know, like, as you mentioned, have gone on to play at very high levels. Um, this is where you kind of have a, a big move in your career, isn't it? And you decide, should I keep studying here? You know, there's probably some universities here that are offering you scholarships and say, you know, you can study here, Terence, you know, this is your opportunity. Or, you know, this is your chance to go back home and, and get that get that competitiveness, get that home field that you, you've missed for so many years. What made you decide to, to go to La Salle, De La Salle University? It's, it started when we have this under-18 game, like under-18 game in Liverpool National League against uh, Lewisham and then against Woking. And it's like, not Woking, Solent, Solent Crystals. Uh, that was the time when PBA legends came here and stuff like that in Liverpool. One of the coaches is... Uh, uh, Johnny Abarientos, uh, Alan Kaidik, one of the coaches in De La Salle University. So, yeah, w- in Kenneth Durham, there's one of the coaching Adamson. They offered me a lot. They off- like 
this, that's when they started offering me scholarships to go to play in Philippines. The one then I chose De La Salle because uh, it's one of the biggest schools in Philippines, and I wanted to be I wanted to play under uh, Danding Cuanco because that's where that's when my dad started playing for for San Miguel because he was the owner of San Miguel back then. So yeah, that's when I chose uh, De La Salle University to. So like decided me because I did so at first I didn't want because I want I'm here already I didn't want to go back and forth go back and forth um yeah it's like I didn't want to go back because I've made names already I've made name here and then I don't want to go back there and just like I don't know what's going on there and stuff like that but my dad forced me to be a better player basically better player better like better person so i came back to philippines to, to for the del sal university i chose del so, sal university mm, as you as you mentioned it's like going there and starting from scratch isn't it and, yeah. and starting from right at the bottom again you know you have to mm -hmm. to to play and and everyone's respect build your network again build the build your trust with the the people around you um yeah and that's not an easy thing to do at all. Um, but I remember when you first transferred, um, you were you were in the B team, correct? The La Salle yeah, B. I was in the B team, yeah, because I was doing a residency. Uh, I have to stay for the school for one year before playing for the for the actual team. That's what, how it works. After when, like, if you transfer from another country to the Philippines or another school to the Philippines to another. So, is that, yeah. if you don't mind me asking, is that because you have a British passport, correct? Yes, because I was resident here, yes. Yeah, I stayed mm. here for a long time and then I came back just to mm. do a residency uh, for one so, year. Um, so you played on the B team um, and I still remember some of the, the highlights that, and, and, and the things that you were sharing because you were still, you know, it's hard for me, it's hard for an athlete to come from here let alone the Philippines, but say America or anywhere, and respect the coach's trust straight away. Do you, do you know what yeah. I mean? And, and earn that trust uh, mm -hmm. and get minutes and have that opportunity. But it looked like in the B team that, you know, you were actually having fun, you were playing, you were, you know, you made good teammates around you. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it kind of described that, that experience of playing for the La Salle B because, you know, you finally made it to the, the one of the, the top teams in the UAAP, you know, the, the Green Archers. How was that experience playing for the, for the B team and representing them? It's like, it's, it's a good experience, a really good experience. It's just like, um, if they really look after you as a player, athlete, and um, they, always, they always give you like what you need and stuff like that. It's, it's just a good experience for me. Great, great experience. Uh, having teammates like recruited from America, like Abu Trotter, that's in the PBA right now, and for Gilles, Julian Sargent, Yankee Haruna, Ben Mbala was one of the best imports in UAP. It was like a good privilege, it was privilege, and it was a great experience playing with these guys that's reached their level already. So, yeah, that's it's a great experience, really. But as you, as you mentioned, you know, starting from scratch, um, go to the point before this, you know, you said you had to start from scratch. Um, oh, yeah. How was that like transitioning into the back into, because obviously it's in your roots, you know, you grew up in the Philippines, you played there, you know, you played high school there, but transferring to the UK, you people don't realize that you, you actually adjust your game and you change the way you think and see the game sometimes because you're in that environment, isn't it? So you have to go back into the Philippine basketball mentality. Uh, how was that, you know, going into the Vassal B? Like, the basketball was so different because, like, in here, they just, like, I, I mean, they play proper defense, of course, but it's not as hard as Philippines, like, when you get the ball, if as soon as you're a point guard, when you get the ball from the uh, from the uh, inbound, 
someone's already up you like in there in your face it's like it's so different because like in philippines mentality when i was there and then there were recruited recruited american players like oh someone's telling oh someone's gonna take your minutes someone's gonna take your minutes that's why they recruited them that's their mentality so every every time that you're new from a country to go to the philippines they always up in your ass it's like they always they don't want like they don't want their minutes to be gone just because you're here you you got recruited so it's a way different from transition from the UK to the Philippines so it's like it's really hard for me to adopt because i didn't know what how it was then until i came back to the philippines for college basketball i didn't know how the program went i don't know how to to adopt what they have during when they were from young to college in the philippines so it was really hard for me to move back and forth so it's yeah. it's 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 kind of like the would you say the the american mentality you know when you go to america um and say you're you're brit and you go there they don't they don't really care what you've achieved yeah. like for, yeah, for, yeah. Where, where, where you're from what you've done you know mm. for example you won national championships in the uk you know you you were mvp final fours and um but they don't really care right they'll just go really up in your face and guard you yes they don't really care especially in the philippines it's like especially when the philippines and like, my dad was well known my surname was well known and they were like oh that's that's uh, that, that's the kid from uk that's been having shout like Mike Mustard's son and stuff like that. That's when it all hyped out that, oh, I don't want him to take my minutes and stuff like that. That's when it, it's basically just quit down on me and stuff like that. So I, I believe um, with, with every athlete, uh, student athlete, they have to go through this at one point. It's a true test of character as well you know how you respond to this you know some people shy away some people get scared um and they don't perform to their to their potential um Mm -hmm. but some people actually rise and um ultimately if you see it as in they're trying to get the best out of you um and you just want to prove them wrong isn't it so Mm -hmm. if you have that mentality um i think a lot of players that usually get far they have that Mm -hmm. they've always had that test they've always had that character building it's just it's this is this was the wrong mentality I had when I was in De La Salle because I was really homesick to be honest. I was really homesick when I came back. And then I was always thinking like every practice if I didn't show if I didn't show no good like if I didn't show what I've got it's like I let myself down. It's like oh man I don't know what I'm I'm doing here. Why did I go back? And then I was thinking back of my mind like if anything happens if i did if this didn't go through i have uk that has my backup anyway because i'm still gonna go back and stuff like that and do uh, i don't know it's like so that's when i started playing for the team a having good teammates like uh that bonds together we still keep in touch um so it's like it's hard for me to adopt what bas- Philippine basketball from UK basketball again. Yeah. So, so w- when when you say you were homesick, you actually so when you moved to when you were uh, fourteen, um, did you actually f- do you, you do you believe you found a home in London? Do you think that you know you you played basketball here, you you found the bo- you know you found the community, you found your friends? Um, is that what you meant by homesick, or is it just more of you know, I'm, I miss my family. Uh, I'm away it's, from it's them. More, basically both. It's oh. basically both. I miss, I miss my family because I'm alone. And when I came back from the Philippines, I was alone. Um, I miss the community of basketball. My friends were back here. You know, I was having fun when I was here. And then back going back there on my own, not having any, like, not knowing anyone else. It's really hard. Yeah. So it's really hard that that I adopt to go back to scratch again, to not knowing anyone to be, you know. And then, yeah, that's about it. So that that one year 
I think you did one year residency, right? And you played for the B team. Um, you've now progressed um, and you get the call up to the A team, is it the first team? Yeah. Um, yes. Explain that feeling. Um, it already, you already touched on it. You said the teammates are, there was a more of a brotherhood. Because um, mm. I, I can imagine B team could be a lot more competitive because everyone's trying to get to the first team. Right. The first team, whereas, yes. whereas first team is competitive, but it, it's it's like okay, we we made it to the main team, and now we need to work together more collectively to to you see the bigger goal, which is the the championship, isn't it? So explain that explain that process, and explain how you were feeling when you actually suited up for the first time for the first team. It was the experience was so great. Like I didn't get to play, like for a, like a big stadium and stuff like that. It's like, it was my heart like dropped when I saw, when I first came into the like arena and then drums was in, drums and crowds was there. It's like, it's crazy how from transition from being just, just an average player to be into that level. You know, it's like, cause it all started when I was in team B at first, the coach of Team A told me already that I won't be able to get to the Team A. He's going to cut me. And then I proved him wrong when we went to Cebu, played some of the schools in Cebu for like three games and then played very, very well, earned a lot of minutes. That's when I gave a little trust to him to be able to reach to the Team A. And having an experience of being, having teammates, like Jerome Tang, Arnold Van Opsa, well-known players, Almond Vosotros, Thomas Torres. They always they welcomed me as like they were my teammates last year. It's just because like they didn't think about like, oh, he's gonna take my minutes, he's gonna take my minutes. We always have to be in the same page. We're always welcome whoever's gonna be a championship team, basically because they're always going to build a championship team to be able to reach the goal that they want to be. They, were, they want to be. So. It's like, I, I think they see you and say, we've been through that. We know you've made it yes. now to, to, you know, because they, they had, all had to go through it and prove themselves. So once, mm-hmm. you, I, I, once I believe, you know, you're in the A team, you're like, yes, you know, this guy has yeah. proven it and he's gone through it. Um, and you've yeah. earned the respect, which is the most important. Respect, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so your first season in De La Salle, you know, I, I, I didn't study in the Philippines, but um, I do a bit of research, you know, I, I hear about you know, the culture out there, you know, they really hype up college basketball. I, I hear like there's rallies, you know, to start off the season, um, explain those those little things. You know, these are probably little things people always always say. You know, the basketball stuff is what you remember, but I think a lot of the off court stuff is is things that kind of make you smile and 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 kind of think I miss that student athlete in, environment. Student athlete. It's being a student athlete. It's just like it's crazy how because people. Because basketball is like the world number one, like number one sport in the Philippines. If they know that you're a basketball player, they always go. They always look up to you because, like, they, like it's a one number one sport, and then they just watch watch basketball all the time. It's just that uh, there's always pep rally that we have before the season starts, and then. It's a big crowd. I mean, all of the students, all of the schools are watching us doing some dancing and stuff like that. Just <laughs> initiation. We have to dress up like a girl to be to dance in front of these thousand of a lot of people. You know, it's just those are the memories that you will never forget because that's when you're gonna start your confidence. If you're gonna be shy, you're gonna be shy in the court. If you're not gonna be shy. Off, um, if you're not going to be shot off the court, you're not going to be shot in the court. So that's where having this initiation and this rally that we have to perform in a big stage and stuff like that. So, yeah. And, and it, it builds that connection with the fans, doesn't it? They, they actually see yeah. you and, and they, they, they're like, oh, wow. It builds that, that connection, that relationship. Um, 
And it also shows, you know, you're not just basketball players, you're, you're, you're just, you know, you're athletes, you're just human beings. Because, you know, like you said, people put you on a pedestal. But when, you know, when they see you off the court, it's nice because they're like, wow, you know, they, they can have a laugh, they can joke about. Um, yeah. And it's, 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 it, it, I see you smiling because you, you, it must have been some nice memories that you've had. <laughs> Yes, of course. It's like, it's things, things like that is just never unforgotten, you know. It's like, no. it's just been part of your journey. It's been part of your life that you will never change. Like, you will, it will never go away, to be honest. For the, for the athletes that are here, you know, uh, all, all around the world wondering what it's like to be a green archer, um, how would, the, say, a usual student athlete they be? Um, you know, would you train early in the morning, get some breakfast no, in, could uh, evening workouts, video video sessions, one to ones? How does it work? It's basically when I was in Team A, we always have this uh, viewing. They call it viewing, like team team breakdowns. It's basically when we have a game, and then we always have this viewing that we have before practice breaking down plays and stuff like that. And then we review other teams, other teams' um, plays, uh, other teams' players. Uh, we study each other. And then we have this one on one-to-one -one, like conversations that you have to be pierced in your role and stuff like that in Del Sal. And then... It's like, and training wise, we only train in the mornings before classes. So we go, first thing, we go up to the gym. We go, we have this weight, weights program that we do before training. And then off the court, then gym, and then in the court for like two, three hours. And then after that, we straight go to, to the dorm, get changed and stuff, ready for school. You know, school until like six o'clock. And then after six o'clock, you got nothing else to do. But that's when the time you're, that's when the time you're like uh, doing extra works, like uh, extra shooting, extra gym, extra, I don't know what else you can do. So the court is just like, five minutes away from where your dorm is anyway so you can just do extra work and stuff like that so, and it's and it's open for athletes to come in and just yes shoot. it's always open yeah the gym is always open until 10 o'clock at night so yeah some like and then they built like an outside court just by our uh, dorm dormitory so you can just shoot around there at midnight and stuff like that. It's always open. So, yeah, it's just like that's when the time you have to do extra. They don't have to tell you and stuff like It's your own initiative to be doing extra work to be a better player, really. Did you, did you find yourself on those courts quite a lot by yourself shooting and putting the extra reps in? Yes, of course, yes, because I... At that time, I didn't have any, enough minutes to earn. So that's when I started working hard, working hard and stuff like that. So when I'm, when I'm not on the court, it's like when I'm not having this minutes back then in Little Sal, I was just working, working, working. After game days, I always keep working hard, keep shooting, keep doing what I can, and then... Yeah, that's when I started losing, trying to lose weight and stuff like that. Trying try to be keep in touch with my uh, body. So back then in La Salle, it's like you all, you look, yeah, like you look after. We have our own kitchen. We have like our own dormitories, like proper. You don't understand, but it's just like a proper hotel. Mm. It's like they always they look after you so much that whatever you eat, you can eat whatever you want. Just go to the kitchen. So it's just back then that I was just eating a lot because I was too, we would just look after. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just when I started having this time that I didn't have any more, enough minutes in La Salle. I started working, 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 shooting at night, having this late nights 
late nights workout. So that's when I started building my confidence, confidence, confidence. So, so describe your, your first season at De La Salle. Um, as you mentioned, you know, the opportunities, uh, there are probably more senior guards there already. Um, you said, you know, you weren't receiving the, the minutes. Um, how did that feel? How, if you had to kind of overview that one season and give it a summary, what, what, what would you say and how did it go? Um, it went after, like it's always uh, um, it's always like a challenge to me back then because I didn't like there was three games already starting off the season that I didn't have any enough, enough minutes and then that's when I started like oh um, I'll just work my way up I'll just work my, I'll work my minutes to to be to be in the court and then I think though I think I, I went down because I felt down because the way I was working during the season the I think the progress is not really enough to be the rotation but then there was this time that it was Ateneo and LaSalle it's just like a big proper rival school game and then they put me in just to guard uh, one of the best shooters in the UAP, Juan Peso Mar. Uh, they told me to guard him, to not, not make him shoot. That's when the time that I have to show what I need to be as my role to perform in the court. So I did, at first, I didn't really, I didn't really like, accept my role back then. Because in UK, I was well-known, and then coming back here and then adopting. It's like I have to adjust what my role is. That's the system that the Philippines, like, you have to know your role. So they told me just to guard the shooter. And then after that game, I played, like, I think 10 minutes. That's when I was, wow, I was like, oh, I think that's my role to be, like, a defender. So sometimes... They always put me in a situation that to guard the best, one of the best players, one of the shooters to defend. So, yeah, that's what my role was. And then that's the journey of being the La Salle, just, you know, to know your role in the team. It's, it's, it's quite difficult for a player um to accept their role. I think it's one of the toughest challenges a player has to face. I mean... And people don't understand is that, you know, they say uh, you play your game wherever you are. But I think there's, it, that's not necessarily always true. You know, for example, mm -hmm. you went, you were in the UK, you know, you, co you were coached under Steve Bucknell. But as you mentioned earlier, he, 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 you know, he had that trust in you and he gave you kind of what I like to call that creative freedom because yes. you built that trust, you know, uh, to, to kind of express yourself. Because I always see the, the basketball court as like a, it's an art, isn't it? And you have to express yourself. Talent, yep. uh, you have to, uh, yeah, you have a system, yeah, you have plays, but I always believe that individuals, especially, you know, talented, uh, talented individuals that, you know, offensively want to like get going, even on the defense, it's an art in, in itself. But I always believe that, you know, having that creative freedom and that trust from the coach kind of helps you. Um, so in terms of, you know, De La Salle, uh, it must have been difficult facing that, that challenge as, you know, this is, you, you came from like getting the ball in your hands and now playing without the ball pretty much, without correct? The ball, yeah. yeah. The, do you think it makes you a better teammate and you, you know, you understand the game? Because I remember when I was uh, like following your career in the Philippines, you know, I, I necessarily don't see the people that are always on the camera. I always, as a, I think even now when I coach, I look at the people usually on the bench in the team. And what I used to see is, you know, you always get up for your team. You know, you're throwing your towel, you're supporting your yeah. team. Um, and those are little things that I think it's a skill, one, to accept your, your, uh, to accept your role, but two, to be a better teammate. Do you think it made you a better teammate? I think, yeah, I think it made me learn how to be like, 
on the other people's shoes. It's just, it's just like, I won't be, I won't be able to uh, be a team teammate, a good teammate if uh, I won't be feeling, I won't be feel, I won't feel what my teammates feel is like. It's basically, yeah. I don't I forgot. I, forgot, I mean, it's hard to explain. It's just like it's it's because because you, you're not on the court contributing, say, thirty forty minutes. Um, you can contribute in other ways. Is that what you mean? And and because you're yes, from yes, the bench, yeah, I mean, yeah. and from the bench, you know, and you've already built this. Like you said, you still talk to these guys. Um, uh, a lot of them uh, yes, yeah. play professionally, you know, and you they welcomed you. So uh, it's your, in a way, your role as a teammate. Your respect to them that you support them. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I support them in any way because, like, I want to be the teammate that supports my teammate to be the best they can be. Mm. It's like I find a way, other way, to make them perform how they want to be. So, yeah. So, for, from you spent one season at De La Salle, correct? Uh, the A team. Yeah. Um, and you decided to go to Adamson. Um, I mean, this was, uh, this was quite spread in, in the, the collegiate news, you know, you're jumping from one university to another. Um, what made you decide, you know, it's a big decision to do that because you're one, you're leaving your teammates, two, you're leaving a program, you know, um, it's a big decision to make. So uh, what kind of, you know, of course, you know, playing time is, is important, but what other factors did you, did you put into it? Yes. It's just that um, I think I need to have more experience being in the court, more um, having like confidence being around the uh, around the coach, and then it's just the time that I have to move forward to look uh, to 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 have myself, you know, have uh, have myself some pride to be. Oh, I can do this. I can do that, and then, so yeah, that's when the time of the I decided to transfer in Adamson to show uh, to show what I can do for for the school, basically. And um, was that I think you mentioned before? You know, when the PBA legends came here, was it Alan Kaidek that was? Uh, yes, it was Adamson. Alan Kaidek that recruited me. Not in Ad- oh, so. in De La Salle. Kenneth Durham was. So. Kenneth Durham, this was my my Nino. It's like my godfather. It's like uh, one of my dad's best friends. Um, he was the one of the coaching Adamson back then when I transferred, and he offered me to play for Adamson to get more minutes, to mm. have more experience and um, confidence. So, yeah, that's when it started, and then he got well. He got f- well when I came to Adamson. That's when the time that they were the last place in the UAP. That's when it. That's when they uh, changed coach for the next for the A team, and then I was playing for the B team. So it was. Um, and how, yeah. how 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 did De La Salle react to that? You know, the coaching staff were they were they <laughs> did they understand? Um, the the head coach the head coach uh, Juno Tolera he he understands and then well most of the coaches but then it's the time that I played moving forward it's like out on the day that uh, I moved to Adamson Dante Kowanko was uh, was shocked that I moved he didn't even know so. Uh, it was just the time that we faced uh, La Salle, uh, La Salle in the UAP. That's when the time was. I went up to Dending Kowanko and he was like, "You didn't even let me know," but it wasn't a joke thing. And then he was just like, "Just a good take, uh, take a good care of yourself and, and stuff like that." So it was just that time that. The, he didn't know that I was that I moved, but he wanted mm. me to stay. So it's just from my my dad's and 
my my uh, decision to make. So. So you're at Adamson now. So yeah. you found a home with the Falcons. Was you know, as you mentioned, they're they're on a rebuild. They're on a transition team, right? They're 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 in a transitional period. I mean, um, new coach. You know, uh, how did it feel transferring from De La Salle to Adamson? Was you know the facilities must be different. Uh, the way the culture is 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 it? Uh, how did that feel to you? The culture was so different, like. La Salle, they will look after you and stuff like that. But in Adamson, it's like oh, you're on your own, basically. It's just a different kind of culture that um, it helps you as a person as well. That because um, in Adamson, you always look after your like you're like uh, you're like uh, oh, what do you want? It's like and stuff like that. But in Adamson, it's just different culture that you have to find your own way to be to look after yourself and stuff like that. So I, I yeah. think that's an interesting point because, you know, you see these top programs, it just doesn't happen in the Philippines, but for example, mm. in America, America D1 um, programs in a way, I hate to use the word spoil, but they, they spoil, kind of spoil, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they spoil yeah. their athletes, you know, <laughs> you know, they, they give them, you know, everything that they need. Uh, whereas I feel sometimes going to a program, which is not as big, has less resources and um, uh, can help build you as a as a human, as a as a as an athlete, as a person, because you have to be more independent. Do you would you yeah, agree on that? Too? Yeah, I agree on that. I definitely agree on that, coach. It's just it's it's most common in a basketball community. It's like basketball mm. lifestyle. So, so we're at Adamson, and it's back to. Back to square one again. You have to prove yourself to the coach, meet your teammates. You probably played against them uh, the year before. Um, how was that? Did, did, they, did they open you with welcome arms? Um, and I know you had to adapt to a new role in that team. Uh, tell me more about that. It's, it's, uh, it's way different compared to when I came from UK to Delsa. They, they, the, the Adamson community welcomes you as like, Oh, a new player. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we we accept you and stuff like that. They always welcome players from other countries, from other different kind of schools. They always welcome because they want to rebuild. They want to be well to be known again as a, one of the top schools back in two years ago before I came back to Philippines because they were like a final four comp uh, final four contender. Um. They want to be on that that um, that level again. So they want to rebuild and stuff like that. So they all they welcome you as their own teammates. Like while I played them before, some of the players was like, "Oh, that's you, that guy from La Salle, that's chubby, chubby." And then uh, that's the time that they welcomed me and uh, with open arms, basically. So it was really a good. Good transition, easy transition for me. Didn't have to, to you know, to like to adopt a different kind of culture again. So, so speaking about the the role on your team, um, you know, the coach, new coach and new team, um, he's defining roles. You know, um, people, players don't usually realize it. They're normally assigned a role, but usually in the season they get in the habit of actually filling that role and that's when they clearly understand it you know some people some coaches they say it to you straight but some coaches will actually um you know build you up into that role so you kind of naturally fall in so what was your yeah. role at, at, at Adamson it was completely different to De La Salle correct yes completely different because I was basically one of the co-captains in um, uh, in Adamson so it's like it's the system that I have to show my other teammates that being a captain, you have to follow me. So I have to work hard as much as I want them to work hard. So that's the time that um, I have to be more vocal, be more as a teammate and stuff like that. So um, be 
being from a, a, a zero minutes on having an experience of actual playing in the court for like 15, 20 minutes a game, it's a big difference because you have to, as a leader of a team, you have to show what you have to bring for the team. It's just, you have to lead your teammates to where you want to lead your school. So yeah, that's the only trans, like the, the my role is to be, to work hard and I to work hard with my teammates to get to where we want to be in that level. So if you um, had to overview that first season that you had with Adamson, you know, um, it will probably be a difficult one because I think you said the team was did not was bottom of the table in in the the, the year before. Yeah. Um, new coach. Did you guys win many games? How was it? Did you know? Was the system in place? Was the coach? Was the coaching? Did they make it clear? You know, were your teammates optimistic? It was the the, the coach because the coach really had a really good system. Um, that last year we the last year before I played for Adamson is is there was just like the bottom of the league. But then when a new coach came in, it's like they. Not gonna lie, but the, the I'm not uh not coaching, but the the coach the year before was very good coach, and then the next year was a good coach. Uh, his name Franz Pumar, and he was one of the top coaches in the Philippines back in La Salle. So he had a good program. He had a beliefs in his in his te- in his uh, players. Uh, we were winning games. Actually, we was winning games. We reached. Um, final four on the first year of me playing Adamson. So it was a good good run for us. Uh, it was, we lost only four, five games, five games out of 14 games in that season. So it was really, it was really a good run for us. And then that's the time that um, we we uh, we made a history of being in the final four again after like after so ten years, twelve years. So yeah, was that was that Coach Franz first year yeah. with you, or was did yeah, you join that was the my second? first year. First year was uh, Franz Pomarin. Franz Pomarin was the coach when I came for Adamson. So um. As you mentioned, it was one of your, you know, one of the school's goals and, and to get back into, say, the elite final four, which, you know, you yeah. achieved. I think you can some say that the, the college program overachieved that season in a way because, you know, you surpassed a lot of people's expectations, right? Um, coming yeah. from a, a season, you know, new coaching, as you said, very experienced, one of the best around. You know, they've, they've recruited very well. Um, in a way, they built themselves up good. So the second season is probably looking very promising that you can actually get to the, the actual final of the UAP, the play, you know. Um, how was that feeling? I mean, the second season, you'll probably discuss it, but you were you had a few injuries that year, right? And you had to adjust yeah. to a new role. Um, I think it was six man, yeah, six man. Yeah, I was a six man. I was a six man that uh, on my second year, and then I was like, um, I was like a backup shooting guard again for for um, Jarek and Misi. and there was this, there was a uh, injuries that was bothering me all throughout the season and then it was basically my knees um, that's when it all started that I have to to adapt a different role as a teammate again to be part of the team so my role was just basically to help again like back when I was in La Salle to help my teammates what I can do off the court and on the court so yeah, that's that was the role, new role that I was uh, having back in on the second year of having injuries. Were you were you still the captain of the team? Were you, did you still have that was, leadership role? Yes, I was still having that leadership, even though I was not playing. I was keep making. I was motivating. I was inspiring my teammates just to do better and stuff like that to make them work hard even more. 
be just being as a leader really it's like when i'm not with them on the court i'm i'm there well i'm i'll make my presence that i'm in the court basically and and that's the thing i think um some players they they kind of they they definitely get disheartened and, and upset when you know they don't play um and someone always told me, just because you're on the bench doesn't mean you're not a good player. Yeah, you know? of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, and someone told me that when I was young, and it, it's very true, you know. And, and I think the players from the, the year before definitely respect you because of how you carried the program in the first year. Um, but they understand that, you know, your body gets over, or older with time. Uh, you had a few injuries situations changes you know basketball teams evolve um, and you adjusted to your role and I think uh, that's a big sacrifice for the bigger yeah. goal because I think you guys went to the the playoffs that year right as well and yeah, the second year again like two consecutive years we went to final fours back to back but then uh, we lost to we both lost uh, to La De La Salle two years straight in the final four semi-finals and I actually remember watching that game and I could see um, how emotional you were because I, th I yeah. think that was a, uh, I think you knew that might have been your last year uh, playing, yeah, yeah, right? That, yes, yeah. It was, it was bad because that was the time that, well, half, half of the season I was, um, I was injured and then I came back just a week before the final fours. So but I told my coach that I'm good to go. I'm good to go. I want to play for my, it might be my last game. So uh, he didn't put me on. Then that's really emotional because I wanted to play from like for the team and for the school for the last time. And then against the team that I played before, it's like, it's going to, it was supposed to be a good feel, like good last game for me. But yeah. I couldn't because they didn't really, they didn't trust my health yet, but you know it's, that's how things it is. That's how things go. But that's but, how it is. But as 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 I said before, even in the south, you know, I, I I still remember. I even saw the pictures again on Adamson. You know, you were as you mentioned, you were leading these guys. You were cheering from the bench. You know, and um, I saw a mo a, like emotions being you know being shown when when you guys didn't win and I could see you supporting your teammates you know being there for them um, that must have been tough that must have been tough it's really been, it's been tough because I wasn't there in the court battling with them it's but I was there being as a teammate to show that I'm there with them battling as well so it's really it's just it was just emotional for me because it was my last game for the school and it was last game for my for the whole college career for me and yeah, it was just very very emotional so and well while doing the the school school hymn so, so you have to go like a uh, school song and stuff like that it's really heartbreaking because you know it's your last year of be playing in the college ball uh, you don't know what's going to happen on your next journey, in your next career. So it's, it's, it's just really emotional, super emotional. I think, again, if you overview your, your whole career, T, it's, it's, it's a lot of emotion, a lot of effort in the space of, say, uh, five, five years, four, five. even less than that, you know, playing in Final Fours in UK, playing mm -hmm. in Final Fours in... in in the Philippines, even was that year when you were in La Salle, you, you made the final fours as well. Yeah, right? we made the final fours. Yeah. yeah so, so basically my whole journey of college <laughs> and high school was, I've been part of a whole final fours basically. So and that's just, it. That's, that's invaluable experience, you know, like, yes, yes, especially definitely. being part of final fours, you know, having, like you said, taking in the whole atmosphere. Um, yes. It's been, well, it's been such a journey. So once you finish, Adamson, you know, that after that last game, as you said, there's an uncertainty and it happens with athletes that graduate and finish. Um, mm -hmm. I remember reading an article that you, 
after you finished, uh, you know, everyone was wondering what you were going to do. Um, yeah, and yeah. I remember reading that you submitted an application for the PBA DD. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah, yeah. uh, so I think you ended up playing at the Calocan Supremos, correct? Yes, yeah, for the MPBL, yes. Yeah. Um, tell me how that <laughs> opportunity came about. It was basically one of the coaches of Adamson before the year before I came. He Coach John. Me, Coach John Callius, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He Child he offered Coach. me to play he he offered me to play for uh, for his Kalokan team because he knew that I can I can bring something to the team. I can bring some chemistry for the team. So yeah, that's when the opportunity came because I didn't know what's gonna happen. Because I submitted the I submitted the application in D League. But then that that D League year was all based, uh, all school based. So they prefer mostly school play, school boys, school players that plays for the D League team. So me and Rob Manalang didn't get to play for the Adamson Adamson uh, D League team. So the, we went to so basically we just went to MPBL and played for a different kind of team. So. I uh, landed in Kalookan and yeah, Coach John really trusted how I play because he, he he knew I play how I played for because I played for his team. He coached me for like two two months and then three months. So it was it was a like it was um, I was happy basically having emotional emotional days that. I don't know what's going to happen for my next career. So it was just a great opportunity and a great, uh, great uh, coach that I've had to coach uh, for playing for Coach John Callios because he really trusts me how I can bring. So it's, it's interesting because I think when you joined the NPBL, it was one of the first years, right? It was still starting. Yeah. It's completely it different still, now. Yes, completely different now. But the same is like, it's just the same crowd as it is now. It's yeah. like, because they all, people think was like, oh, PBL was the thing before PBL, MBL. But now that the MPBL was was uh, created, the first year of um, MPBL journey was, the crowd was at first, it was, it was like super massive. Like we played opening uh, in Araneta, and then the whole stadium was like full of fans and everything like that. It's like I can see people standing from the stands as well on the opening day. So it was, I think, it, I was, so I thought it was like, oh, I think I was I'm in a big league and stuff like that. But then we, when we were going to cities, to cities, there were still big crowds. Like it's like a proper, it's like a proper college basketball games like full of people so it was just not it wasn't different but it was a good journey for me to be part of the MPBL first year it's so, it's it's it's, a, it's an interesting um concept the way that MPBL is because uh, as you you get a lot of local fans that go to yeah. go to the games because they're obviously representing the areas, isn't it? So it's a, it's a different different type of crowd that you get from say the PBA crowds. Um, but it's it's I can imagine you know because ever since then the the league has expanded, um, and I and you know I've heard from people that it's actually going to be bigger than the PBA. It's going to be bigger. It is going to be bigger. But it's like because now the they're traveling to different kind of countries to play. And I was like, and um, I told them. Oh, they went to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they went to Canada. Yeah. And I commented to my uh, Nino, because Kenneth Durandes is the commissioner. And then I commented on his uh, post and I told him that, oh, uh, Nino, come to London, come to London, UK, to, uh, to have a game during the season. And I was, then he, he, he liked it. And then I was like, oh, I think they're going to pursue of having different countries, different games in different countries. So I think it's going to be bigger because there's more cities 
that wants to join in. Yeah, yeah. To be well known as a, you know, so it's going to be bigger and bigger. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, when they first started, my, my, my town, you know, Bako'o, uh, they, 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 they never had a team. You know, now they have yeah. the City Strikers. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you get PBA players, such as, like, say, JJ Helterbrand now playing yeah, in the in the MPBL, you know. And this is what the insight that I've been given, you know, as, as much as um, they've stated that they don't want to conflict with what PBA is doing, they're doing their own thing. You know, they want to work in a way together. I still think the way the MPBL is, is actually improving, I think it'll be better than the PBA. Or oh, it's actually yes. going to overtake it. I think it's going to overtake PBA because PBA it gives like um, it gives more opportunities for other people that the other players that didn't reach PBA, you know, that didn't get to that level. But it's, it's just more opportunities for those players that um, that didn't get drafted, that didn't get any teams from the PBA to be to show they can do in MPBO because it's getting bigger and bigger. And and, then, and and sorry T to cut you off. There are rules in place, isn't it, for this? For example, you you have to have like, is it? I, I I'm not 100 percent sure, but is is it? Um, you have to have players from your area representing the team yes. at least yeah you have to have locals in your team like i think eight players look or five local players in your team and then yeah then yeah then you can recruit well some of the some of this pba players are from that area anyway so yeah so yeah they just cuz they sometimes they uh, they recruit like players from pba that's already in PBA that didn't have any contracts the next season. So they cut, they give contracts to the PBA players that didn't have any contract from the PBA so they can play for the MPBL. Mm. So yeah, it's just getting bigger and bigger really. And then there's some celebrities playing as well. So it drags a lot of local, local fans and stuff like that. So it's a really good, really good uh, basketball league. So you, so you were there for was it three months or one season? Did you play with the? I was Supremos? played one season with Supremos, and then and then I got injured again from because of my knees and started uh, started uh, hurting. So I, I just stopped after that season. But Coach John wanted me to play for him again. So, but I didn't take it. So, yeah. So That's when this I, is. I, I, this is when um, again, I think one of the a big decision you have to make. You know, yeah. you spent uh, Philippines around five years since you five, were six five six years yeah. since you were eighteen. You know, um, what made you decide to go back to London? Because uh, London has been my backup plan. To be honest, it's like because my family was here. Great opportunities are here. It's like because. Uh, to be honest, I didn't get to finish my studies, so UK will be more have I'll have more opportunities of having a job like a a good job or having to continue my basketball career and stuff like that. So yeah, that's when I when I uh, pursue pursue to be coming back to UK just to help out my family, basically help out my family and be with my family again, really, and be with my friends and the community that I miss. And um, I think you made a, a, a big statement in terms of uh, recently as well, because of this current uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you know. Um, I remember watching an, an, an interview with your father um, and he yeah. was uh, back to, and he was in a, you know, a, a Philippine a news company where, where were reporting and, and, you know, he must have said, they were asking him, do you miss basketball? But um, his answer really, really inspired me, you know, what he's doing now and, and what you're doing as well. And everyone in the part of the NHS, you know, the national healthcare system here in the UK yeah. are, are saving lives and it's impactful, you know. Basketball, yeah, you know, it's, you have an impact, it's a different way. But here, you know, the way your father put it, 
was truly inspiring, you know, and that's, um, it's great to see what you're, you're continuing to do after your basketball career, you know, and, and what you, what you, what you are doing for your family as well. Um, do you want to speak yeah. about what, what, how it's been like since, you know, since you've been back to London? Um, I know you have your own business. Do you want to talk about, just uh, touch on things that you are doing? You know, I heard you play National League again, which is great. To hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just because, you know, it's like basketball is not really forever. It's, it's if you get injured, that's it. Well, if you, like, we're just lucky that I'm just lucky that I have UK as my backup because you know there's always a backup plan to have because if 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 it's just basketball then it's just basketball isn't it so yeah we're just blessed that we'll you know I have a, a UK UK uh, backup so it's just and you know now um, I still miss it but. I'm still. I think I'm. I'm. I'm just happy. I think I'm just happy that I have what I have right now. I'm blessed on what I have right now. Uh, having my own family now, you know, it's like it's a blessing in disguise. Um, having a new, having a business, cake business. Shout out to Ellie's Cakes. Uh, you know, it's just. Um, it's just good journey for me at the moment since I came back and I'm happy of what I am right now. Um, yeah, from being, um, from having a basketball career, from being a good, uh, being a father is, it's like, you know, it's a good, good, uh, good experience really. Good ride of your life. That's, that's a really good, um, really good point T um, and, I've, and I know definitely because speaking and being involved in the, the community here in the UK your your story is inspiring you know from where you've gone to to where you are now um, just some final thoughts if there's anything that you would like to share so to, to the younger community here in the UK especially the Filipinos that are you know that see a Terence Mustray and see, you know, I, I want to be like him. I want to play for Adamson and De La Salle. Uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, it's, I would give advice that you just stay strong to yourselves. Just be you. Um, well, like, to be honest, to, it's better for you to start young in Philippines and grow yourself in there like uh, Dylan Dobbins in there. Liam doing, ver in there. doing very well. Doing, doing very, well. very good. Doing very, yeah. very well, actually. Uh, Joshua Barcelona, they're all in juniors, juniors, UAPs, and the NCAA. I want you guys, like the little kids, I want you guys to start from from being young, to grow to your, to, to being an adult in Philippines, because that's where you'll know, your, you'll know the system. But if you, if you are like over 18 and want to go to the Philippines, I think you you can you can do it as if you want to if you want it to to be. It's like on on my experience of having my experience, I just fight what my feelings were were um, pulling me down. So it's just it's just how you have to work hard. You have to show what you can do to help to trust the 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 system basically. Um, to accept your role and you know it's like it's just more it's to have fun to have fun playing playing basketball back in the Philippines so yeah that's it I, I think um, very good points to you um, in, in a way that uh, we develop a love-hate relationship with the game mm -hmm. because you, yeah. you, you love it and then you learn to hate it but as you, yeah. as you mentioned I think we forget to have fun and, and mm -hmm. that's what you, it's a process, isn't it? And yeah. as long as, you know, these athletes just know you're there for, for you, as you mentioned, you know, you're doing it for you, who yeah. you are, what you want. Um, the, if it's opportunities, it will open. But as you mentioned before as well, you know, basketball will stop. I always say the ball stops bouncing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also important to think what you may have outside, which is, like education and, and things like that, which is just as it, to me is, is so important. So, um, but yeah, is there any final shout outs T that you want to say? Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on today. Uh, 
been a pleasure to have her. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to uh, my Wildcards family there. What's up? <laughs> what's up? Um, uh, to Mike's All United guys. Um, shout out to my London boys. Um, uh, yeah, just stay true, guys, and that's it. Thanks, see. Um, just before, I, I just want to say thanks again for coming onto the podcast. Uh, what a lot of people don't know um, is that me and T used to be teammates. <laughs> so we were teammates. Yes. Um, and now, <laughs> um, and now you know, it's, I've, I've followed your journey, been truly inspired by your journey, and now had the pleasure of actually coaching you, which is, yeah, yeah, um, thank it's, you. A, it's <laughs> and, and it's amazing because, as you said, you know, gaining the respect as a, as a player, um, it's actually an honor to coach you and to have your respect. You know, we've won a championship together. It's 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 actually been a good ride. So um, it's great to see that you're in a good place in your life. Um, yeah, and I appreciate the time that you give uh, to the community and to 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 me as well. So thank you, T. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Coach. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the community that's you know that still respects how I am and uh, you know it's just good journey and thank you so much for all the support for the older communities and the old Filipinos that supported me to my journey even though I, it didn't really go well but they're still there supporting and I'm just I really appreciate those people especially you coach because you were just you know you welcomed me since even though you, I came back you welcomed me as a you know as a as your one so it's just a really good you know thank you so much for the support that's it thanks t um it means a lot to me definitely all right um take care stay safe um and we'll catch up soon okay of course god see you soon take Take care. care